Namaste. So we're continuing with our investigation of Vichara Sangraham. Vichara, of course, means investigation or inquiry. And what we're inquiring into is the self, Atma, self with a capital S. And so what we find when we actually perform this inquiry is that everything that we think of as our self, as me or I, really isn't. And the study of astrology, <laughs> which has come up now on this channel, uh, really makes us confront the truth that not only are we not these bodies, but we are not the mind, intelligence, and false ego that tries to masquerade as an independent entity, an individual. And so also the functions of mind, intelligence, and ego are similarly not self with a capital S, but are part of the false egotism and the illusion of material existence. And wouldn't you know it by coincidence, uh -huh, coincidence, today's uh, sutra just happens to address this very point. Disciple, is enquiry only the means for removal of the false belief of selfhood in the gross body? Or is it also the means for removal of the false belief of selfhood in the subtle and causal bodies? Maharshi, it is on the gross body that the other bodies subsist. In the false belief of the form, I am the body, are included all the three bodies consisting of the five sheaths. And destruction of the false belief of selfhood in the gross body is itself the destruction of the false belief of selfhood in the other bodies. So, inquiry is the means for removal of the false belief of selfhood in all the three bodies. Now, this is very profound. Well, let's go into it a little bit. We've talked about the five sheaths, panchakosha. And, but just to review very quickly, the five sheaths are the anamaya kosha, the food body, the pranamaya kosha, the energy body, the manomaya kosha, the mental body, the vijnanamaya kosha, the causal body or the will or intelligence body, and the anandamaya kosha, the consciousness body. So Ramana divides these up into three, the gross body, and then the subtle body consisting of mind and energy, and finally the causal body consisting of intelligence and consciousness. But all three of these bodies, composed of five sheaths, inhere in the false belief that I am an individual. And so we are confronted at every turn with illusions based on these three bodies, composed of the five sheaths. For example, when we do some work with the gross body, we say, I did that. And when we uh, accomplish something with the subtle body, we say, I thought that, or I had the energy for that. And when we do something with the causal body, we say, I knew that, or I decided that, I chose that, I wanted that, or I perceived that. 
See, these are the functions of the three bodies. So we can be in illusion about the nature of the gross body, or we could be out of the illusion and thinking, oh, the gross body is not the self, but still in illusion regarding the subtle body and the causal body. And we see this a lot, particularly among Westerners. I brought up the study of astrology because astrology forces you to confront the issue that, you know, all those choices you think you made in life, actually, there are no choices. And Ramana Maharshi, in many places, I'm not going to dig up all the quotes, but leave that as an exercise for the viewers. But basically, he says, this life is completely determined by our karma, our prarabdha karma. Prarabdha means ripe, ready for harvest. And these are the karmas or effects of previous actions in previous lives that we will experience in this life. So the prarabdha karma is determined at the moment of birth by the first light entering the eyes, the first sounds entering the ears, and the first breath entering the lungs. That's why the birth chart in astrology is so important. And all the other more subtle charts are based on the birth chart. So in the same way, the gross body is considered the embodiment of the false idea, I am the body. But the subtle body and causal body are also expressions of the false idea that I am the body. It's just that in those cases, one thinks I am the energy, I am the mind, I am the intelligence, false ego, or consciousness. Yes, even consciousness is part of the subtle body, the causal body. So when we go into this really deeply, we have to understand that the functions of the subtle body and the causal body are not ours or not ourself either. And if one understands this deeply, well, this is liberation. Ramana Maharshi gives the example of when you board a train, and you're carrying some luggage. When you sit down in the train, you don't keep the luggage still on your shoulder, huh? if you have a pack or something like that. You take it off and put it on the luggage rack, and the train carries the luggage. You don't have to carry it anymore. So this is applicable to, to this whole topic, that when you realize that the self is different from the body, both the subtle bodies and the gross body, then you don't anymore have to take responsibility for them. And this is the meaning of sharanagati. Sharanagati means surrender to the guru. Whether the guru is external or internal. Surrender means one gives up the illusion that this is my body and I can do whatever I want with it. Or this is my mind, I can do whatever I want. Or this is my intelligence. And one hands over all these things to guru. Guru means heavy, heavy with knowledge, heavy with realization. So when one encounters guru in any form, in the scriptures or as a teacher or as one's own indwelling spiritual presence, then one realizes that, oh, 
these bodies, gross and subtle and causal, they aren't me and they aren't mine. I have nothing to do with them. And this is also borne out by science of astrology. Well, not only astrology, all the Vedas. For example, the Ishopanishad, which is the first and really the primary Upanishad, begins Aum Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnam Udachate. That Aum, the self, Brahman, that is full and complete. And this, the phenomenal creation, is also full and complete. You have Nirguna Brahman, the self, and you have Saguna Brahman, the creation, including our bodies and minds and so on. And then Purnat Purnam Udachate, that this creation, this world, and these bodies have come from Brahman. So, in other words, they are not our self. They are not ours. Uh, they are not changeable. They are complete, Purnam, and perfect. Now, the idea of change or transformation is very deeply baked into our understanding of the world and even our understanding of spiritual life. We think that spiritual life is some kind of transformation, huh? but actually it's not. It's simply removal of illusion. So one of these illusions is that the world is changing or the self is changing. But self, with a capital S, Brahman, never changes. Brahman is timeless. Change happens in time. So time is part of the illusion. Time appears in the creation, but that's only because our lack of awareness restricts our perception. And so we're forced by our karma to apparently move through time. But actually, the entire creation is a whole. Purnam. It's complete. It doesn't change. It's created as one thing. Just like Brahman is complete. The creation is also complete and does not need to change or transform. But it's a higher dimensional entity. Time is like a spatial dimension in that view. And we are forced to move by our karma through these successive moments of time. So the illusion is that we are going through time and we're doing this and doing that and taking bodies and then uh, passing away. And we're thinking so many thoughts. We're learning so many things. We're perceiving so many things. We're making choices. We're taking different subjects and analyzing and so on and so on and so on. All this is false. All this was created along with the entire creation in the very beginning, and none of it ever changes. Only our point of view changes because we're covered over by these upadis that give us the illusion of individual selfhood, of embodiment, of thinking, 
of agency or will and choice and so on, these mental functions. But actually, if we look at the astrology chart, we can see that the predisposition for what we call choice is already built in at the moment of birth to this embodiment. And of course, the false ego likes to take credit. Huh? I did that. <laughs> That's mine. That's me. That's myself. But the Buddha, for example, is very explicit about this. He goes through this whole list of bodily functions, including the subtle body and mind. And he says, this is not me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. Neti neti. So if we stop with inquiring into whether the false body is the self or not, it's not. But we stop there and we don't continue to inquire whether the subtle body is the self, because it's not it's the self, <laughs> it's also part of the illusion, then we will not be able to remove the upadis and we will not be able to attain the self with a capital S, the reality, who we really are. So Ramana mentions the word surrender, saranagati, thousands of times in his books and talks. And this is what he means by it that if you really surrender to the guru and the self within, then you will let go all these other attachments and identifications. And that, in a nutshell, is the attainment of complete purna self-realization. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.